Stan Gibalisco here to discuss a topic that you will find in my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. I will include a link to the Amazon page for this book in the description of this video. But what I'd like to talk about right now is a device called a texture sensor. A simple concept, a simple method of sensing texture, whether a surface is shiny or whether it's matte or matte. How do you pronounce that anyway? Uh, I'll have to look it up. <laughs> but a shiny surface is something like a mirror or a shiny piece of metal like a brand new car all waxed and polished. And a matte surface is something like a white piece of paper. How can you tell the difference or how can a robot for example tell the difference between a shiny surface and a matte surface? Well the, the technique is really rather simple. A laser beam is shown at the surface directly at the surface at a certain angle and then several sensors are placed at intervals on either side to recover the reflected laser beam or beams. Well, there's only one laser beam, but to recover the reflection or reflections. A shiny surface like a mirror will reflect exactly according to the optics rule, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and you'll get a laser beam reflected right back at one of these sensors, but only one. Whereas a matte surface will scatter the laser beam and you'll get light detected to some extent at all of the sensors. That's how a robot can tell the difference between a shiny surface, in which case it should, uh, for example, go jump in a lake, or a matte surface, in which case it should go fly a kite. The standard circuitry is included, uh, but not shown in this diagram. It converts the data to something that a microprocessor can tell the robot, hey, go jump in the lake, or hey, go fly a kite. If there's no wind and it detects a matte surface, I'm not sure what the robot is supposed to do. Can you see a robot trying to fly a kite on a windless day? I think it would be rather funny, to tell you the truth, as would be a robot jumping in a lake. But that's just uh, me and my weird examples. By the way, I am a bona fide amateur radio operator Call sign W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. You will find plenty of books about shortwave and ham radio on Amazon, written by me, and plenty of videos in various playlists on this YouTube channel. And a link to the Amazon.com page for Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 5th edition in the description of this video so that you can become enlightened as to whether your robot should jump in the lake or go fly a kite. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.